Welcome to the We Talk Health Podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at wetalkhealthpodcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro, and joining me in the studio today is Brian Thorne and Andy Aiken. Both of them are physical therapists down at Lift Therapy here in Jackson, Tennessee. Brian, Andy, how's it going? Great. Great. Good, Good. morning, Will. Great Good to be morning. Here. Glad you guys are here. I was early. Glad y'all came in this morning. Today, we wanted to talk about foot and ankle pain. Is that correct? That's right. Awesome. Yes. So I guess we'll just kind of go into the questions that we have for you. So I guess how common is foot and ankle pain? Is that something that is probably more common than people realize? Very common. In fact, if you can come up on anybody in there, and if you ask them, do your feet hurt? The answer will probably be yes. Okay. Uh, one in five people have foot pain right now or at any given time. That's in the population. More females than males uh, as we get over the age of 50, that number increases. So by the time you're at 65 or older, one out of three people will have foot pain. Hmm. And that that predisposes you to other problems. Uh, by that time, you're walking with a limp. Mm-hmm. All your activities of daily living can be affected. But one of the most problematic factors in that is that it increases your risk of falling if you're limping over the edge of 65 and we know that 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 is one of the leading falls are one of the leading causes of death over in the elderly uh not because of the fall but because of the the period of immobility hospitalization Mm -hmm. you get other problems but anyway we're just i'm just throwing that out there because foot pain can lead to other problems it's not just a problem that affects our daily lives but it can be problematic in other ways Mm -hmm. but think about when your foot hurts every single step you take is painful yeah. and how many steps do we take in a day so that just sure goes to her for that one thing i was going to throw in there will is you know we think about why is foot pain so common i was going to ask that that's a great question i'm glad you asked that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know i guess i could ask you know let's all think about you know what are the surfaces that we stand and walk on all day long every day it's typically not always grass or soft not grass, or, you yeah, know. right? As we were intended to, but uh, some man-made surfaces. Uh, usually, you know, concrete is the most common mm-hmm. cause. I think is what we see in, in the clinic, uh, and also you know the tile, the hard tiles, uh, even the wood flooring. It does have some give to it, but uh, these hard structures we walk on and stand on all day do not give. Mm-hmm. And normally, you know, if we stood on the grass or the ground, the earth. It would give a little bit, so all those stresses would not be uh, translated through the body. Sure, but they are where we work and live uh, every day, unfortunately. So uh, I think that's why we see this so common in, in uh, so many Americans. Some other causes could be running or high impact sports, mm-hmm. arthritis, diabetes. Of course, when we talk about diabetes, that's a whole another ball game. Blood supply, loss of sensation in the feet. Also, obesity, as we you know have seen in our population, the heavier we are, the more stresses. And also, lastly, a history of foot or ankle injury. We mm. talk a little bit about the ankle, but that if you have an ankle problem or a foot problem in the past, mm-hmm. that can also lead to future foot pain and issues. Now, what about plantar fasciitis? Am I saying that right? I feel like that's, that's one of those words close. that I tend to... Yes. Plantar fasciitis, plantar fasciitis, you'll hear it both ways Okay, for sure. Obviously, that has something to do with the foot or the ankle. Can you kind of like shed some light on exactly what that means or what, what that is? Yes. Andy, what would, uh, let's say if I was a patient and came in, what, how would I present? What are the problems I would I have would if I had say plantar fasciitis? When I first get up in the morning, I head to the bathroom, my heel kills me. I can't even put my heel on the ground. Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning, the pain is the worst. It's first thing, we'll hear that heel. First thing in the morning. If you, if you feel like you got to get up and you're walking on your tiptoes when you go into the bathroom, that's probably a problem with heel pain, and that's probably plantar fasciitis. And what causes that? Before we do that, uh, what, what is, what's the other area of the foot that hurts? How, what, you know, how would I know I, I got this problem? What part of my foot is hurting? It's going to be the heel or the middle arch of the foot is usually where your pain is going to be coming from yes and he mentioned it hurts when you first step out in the morning 
or if you've been sitting for a while, uh, tissues kind of have slack in them when you're sitting down or lying down. You stand up and there's a sudden stretch when mm -hmm. you stand and walk. And that's when you feel the pain. It kind of works itself out a little bit. And then it might burn later in the day throughout the heel and arch. And then that's where hopefully we can come in and help that. And what would cause Lander's fasciitis? A lot so, of problems. <laughs> what would cause this? Um, <clears throat> so the, the hard surfaces for sure would cause this. Uh, the body, we see this in, in the world of physical therapy a lot through the evaluation process. Uh, we look at the entire body. The body functions the best. I think we might have said this before in mm -hmm. another podcast about the neck, possibly in the shoulder. In the anatomical neutral position, that's just a fancy word for saying normal alignment. Uh, when you stand up in good posture and things are aligned as far as the hips, the knees, mm -hmm. the ankles, the feet. There's a term that they use if you've been to a shoe store that, that looks at you, you know, do you have flat feet? Mm -hmm. You walk on the outsides of your feet, they call that pronation or supination. Or is it right in the middle? Are you perfectly aligned? The body, you'll have less chance of having a problem with plantar fasciitis if it's aligned in a normal, natural, neutral, straight up and down uh, posture position. So if you lean towards uh, what we call flat feet, people may recognize that. The foot and ankle will turn in towards the inside part of the arch, and that puts a lot more stress on the plantar fascia, which is a strong connective tissue under the arch. It grows in from the heel all the way across that arch. The arch makes a rainbow effect you know, over, mm -hmm. over there, and the uh, connective tissue attaches from the heel up to the ball of the foot. So when you stand on that, structure the arch will try to spread the foot spreads and it gets micro tears in the tissue ah, and starts to tear away from the heel usually and that's where we get the pain mm -hmm. and you need medical attention at that point so other contributing factors will as brian talked about flat feet or high arch feet mm -hmm. pronators or supinators but also people with tight heel cords that's the calf muscle it could be their tight hamstrings and then the back of the leg. Of course, obesity is another one of those factors. Runners, people that run for exercise, 22% mm -hmm. of runners have plantar fasciitis. So that's, oh, wow. a, that's a high number. Of course, aging, as, as we get older, everything's worse, you know. <laughs> uh, and as we talked about earlier, an occupation where you stand for long periods on hard surfaces, mm -hmm. that's, that's a big factor. And, and what I want to also say, Brian mentioned that perfect neutral alignment. When we get patients, it's it, almost nobody has that perfect neutral alignment in their sure. feet. I mean, all of us are little pronators or little supinators. But, the, but of course, the ones that have more one way or the other are going to be more apt to have plantar fasciitis. I will also say that it's very prevalent. A million doctor's visits a year are related to plantar fasciitis. Really? That's, that, 10% of the population between the age of 25 to 65 will get plantar fasciitis at least once in their life. I've had it. Brian's had it. So my staff have had it. We've, we, we all have it. Uh, a third of the cases, you got both feet involved. And one, and plantar fasciitis is, this is also, you may not know this, but it's one of the most common causes of workman's compensation. Really? When we think about workman's compensation, we think mm -hmm. about long-term back injuries and stuff. But mm -hmm. plantar fasciitis can can make people miss work for long periods of time to the point where wow. it's, it's very costly to our society sure my staff it was we were at our other other office uh, at the sports plus central office on roland avenue at that time uh, several years ago and we had moved in they put some new flooring in and uh, we put some carpet down just carpet directly over concrete we made a mistake there of not putting a a pad under there mm -hmm. and uh, so we had a rash of six of my staff over several months time began to have heel pain and arch pain which was plantar fasciitis it was the same yeah. problem and so uh, we learned that lesson uh, we we put them in some orthotics which we'll talk about more in just a minute uh, but also our next facility the wellness center we moved into we spent a lot of time on flooring mm -hmm. uh, so we it's a it's a dense rubberized type flooring mm -hmm. uh, but that it, it serves really well as far as uh, acoustics, but also for padding to stand on all day. And uh, our incidence of heel pain, sure. arch pain went down dramatically. So it, it, it helped us a lot there. That's great. Now, as plantar fasciitis, is that something that, like, once you get it, you always have it? Or is it a like an injury, basically, that can be fixed? It is an injury that can be fixed, yeah. Okay. But it takes um, some treatment. And that's, one, that's why I wanted to, when you think about, the treatments for plantar fasciitis, you've got physical therapy, mm -hmm. got cortisone injections, 
and you have uh, surgery. Surgery is kind of a last indicated, uh, last resort, I guess. Sure. Uh, not as successful. Are you also, there are also some new treatments out there. Uh, Brian, you want to touch on that real quick? Uh, yes. Uh, Andy mentioned the, you know, the physical therapy, which you can come to us through. Uh, we mentioned this program before, direct access. Mm -hmm. Uh, many insurance we can accept if you just contact us we can see you directly and begin to help you with these problems and that number will be in the description so yes. check it out there before thank you will uh, before <laughs> it uh, gets serious we can help you take care of that get you back on your feet again so to speak uh -huh. <laughs> i uh, see what you did there. but also you know, if they do need a referral to a physician uh, where they w could possibly receive you know proper medications anti-inflammatories or a steroid type shot a cortisone shot as uh, andy mentioned their doctor if, if the doctor thought it was indicated there or possibly surgery later if, if other conservative measures had failed mm -hmm. but there's some other <clears throat> things we can do uh, again we'll, we'll get into the orthotics and other treatments that we can do also but he mentioned another procedure called the 10x 10x procedure it's just mm -hmm. a, it's a non-surgical procedure there is a small <clears throat> uh it's almost like an injection uh but it's a it's an ultrasonic needle is what it is and uh, they go in and look at an ultrasound image and they follow the needle into the damaged or scarred scarred area mm -hmm. damaged area and the uh, ultrasound waves will kind of almost burn away it's not burn but uh, almost just take away remove all the damaged tissue so that the proper healthy tissue can respond and increase the blood flow and heal over in that area but they just remove the diseased tissue with the ultrasound interesting waves through that small needle that's really cool is that something that like the patients awake for they have like local anesthesia or is it even a painful operation just uh if i understand it correctly uh, actually one of our therapists had it recently i believe he had it, that procedure done in, in memphis um, but it's something you can recover from if, in four to six weeks uh, but it's just a local anesthetic gotcha kind of dead in the area and then use that needle to go in and, and perform the treatment. But wow. some, some interesting things out there. Um, they've also, <clears throat> it's kind of hit and miss on uh, the platelet. That sometimes they can harvest your platelets. Mm -hmm. Platelet-rich plasma is what they do. They take your platelets out of some blood and inject it back into a, a damaged area and try to promote healing. Uh, some of the studies hadn't really supported that uh, tremendously, so we're not sure where that treatment regimen is going to go uh, from the physicians. Uh, so we'll see how the research comes out. Sure years to come in that but some interesting things out there uh andy did you want to talk about any other treatments or possibly get into the uh orthotics how we can help yeah i, I think we, we'll probably go into what physical therapy can do okay yeah at this great. point because we talked about alignment issues we talked about inflammation but the first thing we're going to do when referred either through direct access or from a doctor is we're going to is do a full evaluation of the patient because as we know we're gonna we're gonna look at every aspect of their body. There's gonna be they're usually gonna be tight in their leg muscles, usually their calves. Mm -hmm. We're gonna look at their feet in their bare feet, uh, front and back. We're gonna watch them walk. We're gonna analyze their gait, which is their walking pattern, and uh, we're usually gonna pick up on a few things: uh, stretching and strengthening those muscles in the legs. Usually, a lot of stretching. Also, we talked about that alignment issue. We, uh, most of our patients will benefit with plantar fasciitis, will benefit from what we make in the clinic, semi-custom orthotics. Mm -hmm. We make them right there in the clinic. Brian's got them. I've got them. Uh, we simply, there's a, there's a specific type of uh, orthotic. And we think about orthotics, we think about something that's really huge you have to send off for. This is something we heat up right in the clinic. We fit them to the patient right in the clinic. It's oh, not wow. painful. It's fairly soft, but it supports the arch. Mm -hmm. So it's you said an orthotic. That's basically just like a shoe insert. A shoe Is insert. That? Yeah, you you wear it in your shoes, and you can take them out and put them in your Sunday shoes or whatever other shoes you gotcha. wear. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but what that does is realigns your foot to a what we call a subtalar neutral position, where you, if you're a pronator, it helps bring you back to the middle. If you're a supinator, it helps you bring back to the middle, and also. It realigns the forces. So instead of all the forces being on that plantar fascia, where you've got constant pressure and constant micro tearing, now you've got a dispersed pressure throughout the foot and throughout the arch. And so no longer is your is your foot acting like a tent every t step you take and s stretching out that plantar fascia and re-injuring that tissue. Mm -hmm. It actually supports the tissue. Gotcha. And like I said, we've all. Most of us have them in the clinic, and it works really good for about nine, almost 90% of our patients can benefit that. 
from uh, our semi-custom orthotics that we make them right in there in the clinic it takes a little few it takes a few days for your foot to get adjusted to mm-hmm. it so you don't start out wearing it eight hours a day sure but over usually over a week by the t- end of a week or two you can you can wear them eight hours a day and that's you know that's our goal by that time we've also we also de- got some other treatments for the plantar fascia itself we do a lot of ultrasound we mm-hmm. do stretching we do foot mobilizations ankle mobilizations a lot of times the patient's ankle is stiff or mm-hmm. part of their foot is stiff we also stretch the plantar fascia uh, we can use some other techniques to the plantar fascia itself sometimes ultrasound dry needling some type of uh, some type of soft tissue mobilization to that area icing to that area arch taping sometimes yeah so there's a an array of treatment but it all starts with that initial evaluation to gotcha. find out exactly what the problem is and that problem like I said that problem's not going to go away mm-hmm. if we don't address it sure. so so if i'm not treating all the aspects of that problem of what's causing the plantar fasciitis if we don't get those tissues stretched if we don't get that arch supported so that they can have a normal gait pattern and they can have the normal forces throughout their foot and not abnormal forces then um it will likely come back so mm-hmm. we want, we want it to you know like you said fix the problem and most of our folks with plantar fasciitis benefit from those orthotics that we make there in the yeah, clinic for sure the challenge with the foot is that you're standing on it. You need to be able to be mobile and stand on it and work while you're injured. And mm-hmm. that's just really tough, a tough challenge for, for the patient, for sure, but for the physical therapist to try to figure out a way to help this person heal and get back to no pain and all the things they want to do, but yet they're still using this tissue that's right. damaged and injured, so to speak. So early in my career, I just struggled and struggled. Uh, I would do these treatments in the clinic and then send them out the door, and then I didn't do anything to help the problem that would cause this. And so I mentioned about the surfaces. That's one issue. Uh, shoe wear is another thing we can talk about, having proper fitting, you know, proper mm-hmm. room for the toes to spread when you walk, uh, proper padding, a good strong uh, sole of the shoe. We can talk more about that in the clinic uh, with patients and talk them through what they might need. The Hoka shoes are very popular now, and the, the Brooks, uh, there are several out there that they do a really good job of trying to address uh, problems and try to cor- help correct those. But uh, what I saw early in my career, I was, you know, I would help them temporarily, and they would go out and just, it would just flare up again. And so I finally discovered this orthotic product we've been using. Uh, it's uh, made by a podiatrist, foot doctor out of Australia originally. Mm-hmm. He's marketed this nationwide. and. And uh, you can get this orthotic here, but it's uh, Philip Vasili is his name. But he has a, a product that he sends out sandals and shoes. A vion- he calls them Vionic products. But what this is, the orthotic that we have from him is a heat molded product who can mold it to your foot. It fits you exactly. Uh, when you heat it up, it molds around your foot. It supports you. We can trim it and shave it and cut it to fit your knees as far as different shoe types. But uh, what I found is it, it's almost like a dynamic splint. So, okay. you know, when you injure something, a lot of times they'll put you in a cast or a boot to allow the body to heal. Mm-hmm. The body is designed to heal if we give it a chance. So when you're standing and walking on tissue that's injured, we don't give it a chance. But what this does, it'll help support that tissue from underneath so it does not get stretched when you stand on it and walk. It allows it to heal. It becomes a dynamic or a moving splint. So it moves with you, but it still supports that arch in the foot. It's not allowed to spread gotcha. out and tear that tissue of what caused it originally. And so our ability to help the patients increase dramatically uh, when we're able to fit these orthotics to them. I'm so glad that we, we found that product early on. Yeah, it seems like to me like that's something that's significantly better than, say, going to Target and getting just a, a pre-molded random shoe insert. Like if you're having foot pain, that might help the symptom. But what you're saying, it could actually, the one you guys have could actually fix the issue or at least help a lot more than what those could yeah it's 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 a it's a semi-custom made in other words it's custom because Mm -hmm. you are molding it to your own foot Mm -hmm. and we're we're heating it up with a special gun and we're molding it to the foot and also we're making sure the alignment is a a neutral alignment instead of just allowing the patient to walk and find their own alignment we're trying to line them up to a more neutral alignment while it cools before it cools down and while it and after it cools of course it it forms a stable surface so we're we're helping them get to a sub-tailor. I know I use that, that neutral, sub-tailor, neutral alignment 
so that that's the most healthy position of the foot instead of aligning their foot to to a to a, a shelf model right we're aligning it to their own foot but we're also putting that foot in a neutral position so you're basically yes. making a like a, a dental retainer but for your feet oh yeah it's yeah. a good yes. good analogy to hold it in the position that we that we want that's, yeah. that we need once i've seen a store that you mentioned uh, a lot of times it'll be either too forgive me for the simplicity of this but either too soft or too hard <laughs> uh, a lot of people when their foot hurts they just want to buy a pad i just need mm-hmm. i need some i need just need some insole pads some relief relief give me some padding well Padding is nice, but it doesn't support the structure of the foot. The, the bones are actually spreading, and so it puts tension on tissue that mm-hmm. is micro-tearing. So actually the bony structure of the foot needs a little firmer support, but it's some of these other ones that are too hard that you might buy off the shelf, you're just hoping that it's going to match you know, match the shape of your foot. Right. It may help. It may help, but it, it may it may cause it to get worse if it's not fitted to you right. properly, which that's the advantage of this product that we have for 25 years at our office. But. Absolutely. So how do I know my pain is coming from, say, plantar fasciitis, or how do I know if it's something else? Well, again, Will, that comes from the evaluation process. You know, foot pain actually can be coming from the spine. It can be coming from uh, higher up in the leg, the hamstring, the calf or something the ankle mm-hmm. got a lot of ankle injuries so uh, that's where the evaluation process comes and we're going to look at all the aspects we're going to test out the spine we're going to test out we're going to watch you walk we're going to do an evaluation of your hip knee ankle and foot so uh, within a, a few minutes with a good evaluation we're going to tease that out and then we'll be able to treat the, where that pain is coming from but we'll all have that done in, within the first evaluation hour Wow. Okay. Or so we'll be able to direct that treatment towards whether it is needed to be treated like plantar fasciitis, forward plantar fasciitis, or some other problem. So in our other podcast that we've done, you guys have mentioned, say, like the neck. You're able to sit down with the patient, evaluate them, and, like, manipulate their neck until you find what they call, that's my pain, like, that's call correct. their yeah. their pain. Does this, the foot and ankle kind of fall into that? Like you'll reproduce that pain to find uh, out exactly where it is? Yeah, absolutely. And then you'll address it from there? Yes. Gotcha. We, we know what to look for. That is correct. We've treated thousands of these over the years. <laughs> it's usually tender around the heel or in the arch, as Andy had mentioned before, or kind of the inside of the arch throughout the entire tissue of the arch. And it should be sore to touch, usually tender in that area. We can kind of elicit that, reproduce that. Whereas, for example, diabetic neuropathy is very common. Uh, my own father uh, suffered from that. But he would have burning, he would say, uh, burning pain, stinging pain, tingling pain mm. in my feet, and it shoots through there. Well, that could be mistaken if I just casually listen to that, and I might treat it like a plantar fasciitis patient, which would be wrong. Uh, but diabetic neuropathy, he would need some other medical uh, treatment uh, to help with the process of diabetes and you know diet and medications, things like that. There would be a burning, stinging, prickly symptoms that would happen from the shin down on both feet probably and not have good sensation in that area, not just the one foot in the morning, as we mentioned before, when you first get up. Mm-hmm. Some telltale signs of that for plantar fasciitis. If it's coming from the back, we'll be able to tease that out very quickly. Usually that pain's coming from the posterior or the back of the leg, down the hip, buttock area, down, and then can go all the way to the foot. Mm-hmm. But we can also elicit that with a back evaluation. We can bring about that pain from certain movements, and, and that will tease that out fairly quickly. And we can determine whether that's coming from the, the spine or actually coming from the foot itself. Spinal movements we ask the patient to do, or the therapist can do a mobilization on certain vertebral segments as well, yeah. as well as put tension on certain nerves around the sciatic nerve area. Mm-hmm. Uh, that can also, also, I'll use the words, light up, uh, cue us in to what maybe coming from the spine or what may be coming from something else. So all, all these things can be similar, but they all have the unique characteristics for each one. We'll help you through that in the di- diagnostic process, evaluation process, as Andy mentioned. Right. And, and you know, these, success, these treatments are fairly successful as long as we get them early enough, you know, if they're not overly inflamed. If, if we don't get the success we're looking for in a few visits, then we will direct them back to a doctor or mm-hmm. if they haven't seen a doctor, of course, we want to accompany that or, or address the doctor, get them back sure. to the doctor. Sure, yeah. uh, doctor, nurse practitioner. Get some, sure, yeah. yeah, get some some x-rays or whatnot to get them part of the process. But um, the main thing is we want to we want people to understand that there's a, there's a treatment for that. They don't need to walk around with foot pain. I think we've treated every nurse at Jackson General 
and the ones we haven't treated, they just hadn't gotten over to us right. yet. So <laughs> all hospitals so, with concrete, yeah, and, and all you know factories. And, yeah, so we, sure. we want to make sure our treatments are very successful. Our evaluation process is going to tease out what the problem is, so we can get you some help. Yeah, uh, with these these treatments we've been talking about. And we're, we've also made some relationships with uh, some shoe store owners in the area, and uh, they're very knowledgeable about what shoe products are out there, and we try to stay in touch with them. We've actually treated a few of them and conversed with them still <clears throat> to this day, friends with them, to see what types of shoes are out there, sure. uh, what's, what's being provided, what's the best for this person's situation. We've made referrals back and forth, even in that aspect as well. And you know, that's a great point. Shoes are a big factor. Mm-hmm. We, don't, we usually wear our shoes way too long. A shoe can wear out in the midsole, even though it still looks good. Mm-hmm. It doesn't support you. Uh, or you can get some cheap shoes. But cheap shoes or old shoes. Uh, unfortunately, we do probably need to pay a little bit more money, and I've learned that the hard way. I'm the cheapest guy that I know. <laughs> but you need, to, you need to get a good pair of Just shoes yeah. with, <laughs> with a good arch and a good heel support. And we, people that walk, like like me and Brian, we, have, we, we use the same we, – we wear – athletic shoes to work every day we need Mm -hmm. to get a new pair every six months oh wow if we're walking and standing all day like we are Mm -hmm. and and we generally don't do that our shoes wear out so just getting a new pair of shoes with a good arch support and a good heel support will will do wonders and then we're talking about you know orthotics we wear an orthotics on top of that so we're really kind of addressing a lot of those issues that can can over time lead to these problems sure and we can fit our, our orthotic product in uh, most any walking shoe, a laced shoe, or uh, athletic shoe. And then we can help if the patient wants to purchase some more, uh, we can help them through that process as far as what I do is just t- simply just take my orthotic to the store and try it on in the shoe before I purchase it. Uh, but it can make a... It can make a good shoe, a great shoe, with a proper orthotic. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation. Uh, if anyone is out there who is experiencing constant foot pain please give these guys a call they certainly know what they're doing they've uh, been doing it for a minute now and uh, they can absolutely help you uh, brian if there's someone who wanted to call you what would be the number they would call our office number is uh, 731-421-6950 you can find that you can find us on the lift wellness center website also under lift therapy and uh, I believe you'll have some of the other links on the I will. podcast. Yeah. This has been a great conversation, and thank you for listening to another episode of We Talk Health.